the uh, piece that you've written, um, A Winter of Recrudescence, is uh, one that I just absolutely loved in listening to. Thank and, you. Um, Thank you. Oh, yes. The um, first question I have for you is mm -hmm. about your um, process, how you come about your themes. Um, we can talk more about the title as we go, but uh, your themes, uh, whether you write on paper, uh, improvise, <laughs> Uh, these are the kinds of questions I, I, I ask as a composer, just in, in terms of craft. <laughs> Thank you. Well, uh, for the, definitely for the guitar, since the guitar was actually my first instrument, uh, I started playing it when I was five. Uh, I definitely started improvising, um, just playing things, seeing what, what I liked, what felt good in the hand, uh, et cetera on the guitar and I started writing those things down straight into the computer. Uh, I don't go to paper because I feel like it's an extra step. Uh, I happen to use a software called Lily Pond where it, you can type into a, Lily, um, a text document and then the Lily Pond software compiles it and creates PDFs and um, if you want a MIDI file. So for me, typing into Lily Pond, I, I type A4 for an A that's a quarter note or G16 if I want to. So it's it feels like writing on the page, but it's just it's exactly the same as writing on the page for me. You understand? Because so interesting. Yeah, it's like a you're using language itself just to get yes. the notes in. You're identifying just type. Them. Really? Right. So, I mean, to, to get things in the right octave might get be a little bit more, because you have to use commas and ex, and um, apostrophes to, to go up and down octaves and stuff, oh, and, to, and yeah. to get, um, you know, any sort of articulation or <clears throat> dynamics, that takes a little bit extra coding kind of brain. But just to get the notes on the page, it's, yeah. it's very easy, very simple. So once I started using Lily Pond, I stopped writing to paper first unless i happen to be away from my computer and then i have a, a little notebook in my pocket with with uh staff paper that i write on right I so it something. serves you really well in getting the idea straight to realization no Correct. yes yeah no no labor involved with messing around with yeah fantastic yes. so, lily pond yeah. lily pond i love it and it's <laughs> um shareware i mean it's 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 um contributed to from um, com com um, coders from around the world mm. so it's free to download and, it's, and use and they have every once in a while I have updates and such uh, I think I'm like three updates behind or something but that's <laughs> right you got to keep up with those <laughs> <laughs> but I just love it I, I just love because it's so simple to get the notes on the page yes and it creates beautiful just without any effort it just creates beautiful pdfs and like I said, you, it can also create a MIDI file, which I use to like make sure I don't have any um, typos. Sure. <laughs> if I hear something that's weird, I'm like, did I write that? No, I did not. Let me <laughs> yes, I did. I oh. <laughs> Excellent. So yes, I start on guitar and actually for almost everything that I write, my, my first inclination is to pick up a guitar and, and try to figure out some melodic materials and well, rhythmic yes, materials. Yes, you are, you're such. an accomplished player. You've been doing all kinds of different things, uh, all, all kinds of instruments as, as well. Not yeah, just I, the guitar, but the bass mm -hmm. um, and trumpet, I noticed, and, and, and various other winds. <laughs> Fantastic. Yes, yeah, uh, all I, kinds I had ADD of... as a child, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, join the club, thank you. So okay. I had a lot of fun in high school yeah. learning, like all, all my friends, I would teach them guitar or viola because I also I picked That's up right, the viola strings in fifth grade. And cello. Yeah. So <laughs> I would teach them guitar or viola if they would teach me flute or guitar or there oboe. You go. <laughs> Fantastic! Yeah, yeah. And this must serve your orchestral writing a great deal. I yeah. think so. I because I have a sense of well, if I if and also I have several instruments. Like I, I have a trumpet, yeah. um, in B flat. I have. A clarinet in B flat. I have a saxophone in. Actually, I have a sax. I have a tenor and an alto saxophone. Um, you know, so I have these instruments I can try things on. <laughs> so, yeah, I tend not to write the really super impossible things. I'm like, I 
can kind of do it. So I figure a professional can do it. <laughs> <laughs> did you collaborate in the performance of it in the sense that did you? Not a lot, no. Um, when I first wrote the piece, I think I was paired with a different guitarist who, um, I don't know, if COVID, so I don't know what happened that right. he wasn't able to um, to participate in the end. That would be an ex aequo question. <laughs> but I didn't actually end up talking to Mia until like a couple of days before she went to do the recording. But of course, you know, when I spoke to her, we had a, a Zoom meeting and she played the piece. I'm like, oh, that was gorgeous. I have nothing to say. Yes. She had just had this wonderful interpretation oh, of yes. it. And um, there were a couple of places where like she said, oh, I would like to hear more of this. Well, we'll put in some more peace signs. We'll we'll extend that section yeah. um, and such. Wow. But really, mm -hmm. the piece was yeah. kind of completed. Um, and then, you know, because things kept getting delayed with COVID and it just sort of sat there on the shelf until Mia came in and just just so beautiful, like from the first time I heard it from her yeah, over over Zoom. It was, I just, agree. She's just lovely. I agree wholeheartedly. Lovely, lovely yeah, she, and, um, you know, I think I'd like to ask you about your um, depiction of recrudescence in the ah. winter of recrudescence. It was it's a really compelling title. And it, it, it speaks to me, at least, uh, to an internal experience that you've, I think, really successfully brought to sound. Um, Thank you. When I first heard it, of course, I heard some of the ambient uh, music that you do uh, as it opens up very slowly, quietly, mm -hmm. with a lot of space. And this wonderful scratching, which I'd never heard anyone do in a piece oh yeah i had said tapping on the on the guitar but you know when she did it with her nails um yes. instead of with the fingertips i just yes. thought it sounded so great just and that was her that was again a, an interpretation that she did because i just had in the score light tapping but when she so did this nail, was, this oh, yeah. this helped open up that sound <clears throat> which for me was yes. really compelling in that it felt like something scratching at your door you oh, know no. like some reminder <laughs> of mm -hmm. of of this thing that's coming back right it's a little yes. uncomfortable you know <laughs> very right. yeah. very compelling um and and could you speak to the theme Yada. this lovely descending uh theme that keeps coming back and how perhaps you feel it represents um your internal experience and in trying to express this recrudescence well that was part of so i was playing around with harmonics um and actually i the i started with the the initial theme of the da, 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 da. that was i was just like oh that's very nice and i was able to do it with, solely with harmonics i'm like that's really cool and i was trying to figure out how to take it up an octave and and such and it the way it sounds with harmonics is just so um spectacular and i was you know playing with other things playing with different chords and you know playing it with um not harmonics i guess ordinary notes um and such and then i was figuring out that i could do that that descending third over different chords if depending on how i did the chord shapes and such and so it was just really just coming out of that. Da, 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 da. It was just a snippet of that. So right, motivically, it just belongs as part of it. Yeah, it was. Mm -hmm. it, it, it really, it really was a. It's this lovely motif that kept recurring, and then there would be variations. <laughs> variations, almost yes. like the, almost like the list, the, 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 the experience of trying to turn away in, a, in a sense mm -hmm. of it you know um, in uh, through your use of uh, the variations in 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 tremolo which i found the the uh, beautiful the tremolo section um and your tapping it's a lovely ostinato that you were doing the left mm -hmm. hand with the harmonics that's yeah, is I that something so you so much fun with that do you do that a lot with your metal playing because i know you do uh, um, i do not because not on the bass okay. but uh, my friend who it's is bad. the guitarist for my symphonic metal band he does yeah. do tapping a lot 
And um, I also had, I came across a fellow who plays Chapman stick years ago. I don't know if you know that instrument. Oh, I know. Which the is all tapping. Stick. Yeah. <laughs> so I had never heard of it before. Um, oh, it was, this must have been back in like 2000, 99, 2000. I'd never heard of the instrument before. Yeah. And I was like, that is the coolest thing ever. That's right. Stanley <laughs> Jordan was one of the first to, to make records of that back in the early mm -hmm. nine, uh, early eight, mid 80s. It was about 85, oh, so okay. 84, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, incredible, right? The counterpoint. Yeah, you know, this is, you know, yeah all, because you're, you have all the, 10. All 10, yeah, because you have the, the, the treble side and the yeah. bass side and you're just doing That's your a, thing. And... Too many strings, too many fingers. <laughs> I mean, uh, let's face it. <laughs> well, anyway, no, but, no offense. But I, oh, well. <laughs> right. But I was trying, I, I would every once in a while try to do stuff like that on the guitar, which only has six strings, but that was, th that section was definitely inspired by Chapman's stick. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, no, really effective. And the use of arpeggio too, the lovely mm -hmm. arpeggiating chords. Um, did your process involve picking a form let's say a pre-described form something something did you see it did you see it as a whole at first or was it a matter of putting parts together well <clears throat> i generally do things that are through composed um i often will come back to something from the beginning and the end even if I'm not having a piece where I'm deliberately just repeating things over and over again, because that's the idea of record essence is that this thing is coming back again and yeah. possibly again. Yeah. Um, but with this piece, I, I was, you know, I was experimenting. I was fooling around with things. I, I had my Chapman stick section. I had my, um, started with that, uh, initial harmonic section because I was just having a lot of, great time with harmonics and how they feel so clear and pure and wintry kind of yes and such yes, yeah. um and you know i just kept building and building and things would come to me in dream and i get up in the middle of the night and i'd be playing my guitar <laughs> really things come yeah, to you in dreams a lot, of, a lot of stuff comes to me in dream yeah wow well what's that so, like I, that's never happened to me wow uh, it's, it's just that you're you're, you're hearing it just, I'm you hearing it. it, and then if I wake up and I can grab a piece of paper and a pencil, I can write it, write something down. Then sometimes the next morning when I'm actually awake, I'm like, what was I, what? <laughs> but sometimes if I can get my guitar, like if I've fallen asleep with my guitar in the bed, then I can just grab my guitar. And I guess that happens more often when I've fallen asleep with my guitar in the bed. Keep that uh, guitar in the bed now. <laughs> yeah. How many do you have? Do you have quite a few oh or you have too many oh, I was <laughs> counting because I have I still have um the guitar that my um, my mom and my grandma gave me when for my seventh birthday which is not the original guitar that I had Th that one was a three-quarter size and disappeared but I have a full-size Yamaha guitar from 1977 <laughs> it's fantastic nylon I love it. steel I still, steel string steel, steel string yeah. All my Those guitars are, are solid are still instruments, strange. aren't they? I love it. It's solid. so great. Yeah. But so I still have that one, which I've had, you know, I played it throughout college and yeah. still play it occasionally. But I have now a an East Eastman that I that can be plugged in steel string guitar, acoustic guitar. I have a Schecter electric guitar. Okay, I that's have serious. A, yeah. I have a um I have this guitar that I keep in my trunk of my car because it's got a plastic back it's an uh, I think it's an ovation oh yeah you know one of those with the sure. rounded plastic the back carbon back that yeah. I yeah so that I have that for when I was going to people's homes to teach ah. so but it's no longer in my car but I had it in my car for like seven years yeah. <laughs> that's where that's where it lived yeah. plus I have um I had do have a steel uh, uh sorry a nylon string guitar that um, an old conducting teacher gave me when I was in college, um, Beverly oh. Taylor. Um, she was moving and she was like, do you want this? I'm like, yeah, sure. Um, but I don't play it as much because it's a little old and I've been told it can't be really fixed, but yeah. alas. And then I have the basses. I have, you know, I have a Rickenbacker bass. I have an Ibanez bass. I have a five string Schecter bass. I, 
<laughs> I have an acoustic bass guitar. Um, so. I think it's also an Ibanez. So many <laughs> guitar then, acquisition syndrome. I think it's oh, called. Oh, how did this happen? Like, <laughs> Don't let it stop. <laughs> <laughs> but but then I have like you know I have two violins, a, a viola, two cellos because one of them is set up for um, gut strings to do baroque music in four fifteen. I was going to ask you about that. Yes, your early yeah. music stuff with the Kilisma. Uh, Quilisma, Quilisma, Quilisma concert. concert. Sorry yeah. for my my inability to like. Speak. No worries. It's beautiful. It's no. a it's a little known. A Quilisma is a little known ornament from like the medieval period. So ah yeah, a type of trill. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And yet you're and and do you play harpsichord or double uh, gamba? No, I play or? recorders. Recorders. Oh, lovely. Um, mostly bass recorders, sometimes tenor. Um, we amongst the three of us, it's a trio. For, as the, the core ensemble, we have several instruments by a, uh, an Italian maker named Lavirgi that are um, based on Renaissance <clears throat> instruments. Sure. So um, Lisa and Carol and the other two members, they have the, the altos and sopranos and, <clears throat> and all. But I mostly can confine myself to playing tenor or bass because I just love the lower end of things. Sure. Probably because I started on a guitar, <laughs> then went to bass. So yeah. and I played viola. So I'm I I like the lower end, mellower, mellower things. Yeah. Wonderful. The um also I found compelling too the Balkan fields that you work with. Oh yeah. The Balkan fields. I play fields. bass with them. Yeah. yeah. All um mostly Macedonian, Bulgarian, but we do um spread out into a little bit of Serbian, a little bit of Greek, a little bit of you know, different. Uh, the rhythms areas. must be very interesting. The rhythms Love must them. be really. Oh, yes. Yeah. So when I have that section in Winter Recordescence that's in 16, eight, um, 16, I think. Yeah. It's like, yeah, that, that's a thing that I just love to do. Or, right. Um, you know, I, I write a lot of things in 11 8, 7 8, um, because I just love those rhythms. These asymmetrical it's, things. But it's just, it just keeps. I feel like it's it doesn't just sort of bump bump right. bump. It, it has this sort of lift to it, but you know, you just constantly having this forward motion. Yeah, oh, yeah. you're absolutely right. That's the, the effect it has on me too, in terms of. Uh, I mean, I can't necessarily organically bring it into my own writing, but I I still mm -hmm. really you know admire it, and. I also would like to ask you about your experience writing this piece. How long did it take you? Once I started actually typing things into, because I, you know, I spent probably a couple of weeks exploring different things, um, improvising and such. But once I actually started writing it down, I think I had it down in like four days. Fantastic. Yeah. But, but I mean, that's after sure. four weeks of fooling around and doing different things, but this is how I'm going to arrange it. This is how I'm going to, these are the sections and then the physical typing. And then like to get the notes down, it took me a day and then yeah. trying to get in the, you know, where do I want um, dynamics? When are, where do I want swelling? When do I want things to, you know, that such, that probably took me another three days. But that was after a couple of weeks. I, I can, it's hard to tell. <laughs> yes, I know. I know it took you a lifetime right of, of work <laughs> right. and then suddenly right. that it might appear so quickly mm -hmm. yeah wonderful well um i certainly hope you write more solo guitar music i would i would definitely come well, to i the have concerts. two other pieces excellent i have two other pieces that wonderful I've already done years ago um one i started that was started out for a student of mine so i started writing her for her and another piece that i wrote years ago that for myself to do an, a, I did a solo guitar concert up in New Hampshire um, oh. back in 2008. And I wrote a piece for that. Wow. So. You, you, pl yeah. Okay. You played it. Yeah. <laughs> well, so. Mel, it's been a real pleasure uh, oh, speaking you. with you this morning, you um, this afternoon. Yeah. And thank you so much for your c congratulations on your commission and a just a really beautiful piece of music. And, I'm so uh, pleased you like it. Do.
and I know many others will, of course, you know, and uh, that's, uh, that's it. It's, I'm afraid <laughs> it's a wrap, Mel. Okay. I, um, I mean, I could go on, I could talk to you all day, but of course we've got to <laughs> um, move I'm on. You probably, you've got to get on to teach probably conduct yeah i have a, I have a student you're... in half an hour so. that's right <laughs> anyway well thanks so much for uh, taking the time to uh, allow me to interview you well let me know if you ever um do try to perform it or play it or let me know oh well goes. thank you thank you yeah i've got i've got the scores and yeah i'll i'll teach this piece i know <laughs> i i will yeah awesome yeah and now uh, we'll, we'll be in touch